we now consider special forms of factoring. With some basic tools for factoring, it's worth setting aside some special cases. We'll note a couple of these, and then one of these special cases is going to point to something we can use when we have a cubic or a degree three. Now, our first special case, we have difference of two squares. This case we're going to use often. So what do we have? I'll have a plus b times a minus b. So I have first or a, last or b. And then the difference between the two factors is the plus minus. If I don't have the plus minus, we can't do difference of two squares. That's going to be something else. This goes to, okay, I like to use it as AA minus BB. That's convenient sometimes. Or you could just write it as A squared minus B squared. Now, to see this, all I need to do is FOIL. So for this, we'll get first go to AA, outside minus AB, inside AB, and then last minus BB. And the outside and the inside cancel out. So just leaving us with the first and the last. So you'll notice this would be what you would get if you were in a hurry and you weren't careful foiling. You just took the first and last. For a numerical example, let's um, just go with numbers. So if I try 7 plus 3 times 7 minus 3, that's just 10 times 4. By the rule, we're going to have 7 times 7 minus 3 times 3. That gives me 49 minus 9, and I get the 40 again. So that checks out. Now, we're going to be interested in factoring quadratics, so those are going to be more like things, say, x squared minus 64. The bookkeeping I do here, because the a and b can get complicated, depending on the problem you're doing, I'll figure out what a and b are first, do some accounting off on the side, and then just drop things into the formula. So if I have x squared minus 64, well, x squares up to x squared, 8 squares up to 64, I verify that I have the negative sign in the middle, so difference of two squares applies. I drop into the formula and I get x plus 8 times x minus 8. Of course, if you have time, you should FOIL. We won't do that here, but you can check that yourself. So that's the basic setup. Let's try another one. So how about 4x squared minus 9y squared? So here we have x and y, not a problem as long as we have squares. What squares up to 4x squared? Well, that's going to be 2x. 3y squares up to 9y squared. And we notice in the middle we have the minus sign, so we could just drop things into the formula to get 2x plus 3y times 2x minus 3y. Of course, you should check that by foiling We'll let you do that. Something to note, if we have something like x squared plus 25, you should be careful. Typically what happens is you focus on the squares and then you forget the minus in the middle. If it's a plus, you're not allowed the difference of two squares. If you check, you'll catch that. So as noted, always a good idea to check. Okay, but this we're not going to know how to do right now. Let's consider an example with exponent issues. We have 16x to the 10 minus 25y to the 16. Now, how do we deal with variables when the powers are larger than 2? Well, let's take a look. So how do we get to 16x to the 10? The 4 is going to go to 16. What's going to go to x to the 10? Well, if we think about the product rule for exponents, we have the same base. We just add the exponents. If our two terms are the same with the same exponent, what do we add to itself to get to 10? Well, that's got to be a 5. So we want to go with 4x to the 5. And note the check, x to the 5 times x to the 5, we add the exponents, we get the x to the 10. For the second term, the 5 will go to 25. To get to y to 16, by what we just explained, we should just go with half. So I'll use y to the 8. When I check that, y of the 8 times y of the 8, we add the exponents, we get y of the 16. We have the minus in the middle, 
So now we can just drop everything into the formula. So 4x to the fifth plus 5y to the eighth times 4x to the fifth minus 5y to the eighth. And we'll leave it to you to check. Now, let's look at the next one. Here I have 8y minus 18x squared y. So this does not look immediately like it has anything to do with squares. But note, every time we do a factoring problem, our first step is to look for a greatest common factor. You might be able to do your problem without it, but it can definitely make your numbers a lot easier to work with at a minimum. So here we'll note, okay, we have eight and 18, so we can bring out a two. I have y and y, so I can bring out a y. We only have x squared in the second term, so there's gonna be no x part in the greatest common factor. What's left over, four minus nine x squared, well now difference of two squares applies to that. So what are we gonna do? Well, two is gonna square up to four, three x squares up to nine x squared, we have the minus in the middle, so we could just drop things in the formula, and we'll carry along the greatest common factor. So 2y, 2 plus 3x times 2 minus 3x. And then that's what we're looking for. Now, next level up, okay, so things that difference of two squares where they can show up where you might not expect them, First example is gonna be difference of two squares inside a difference of two squares. And depending on the exponent that you have here, they can actually nest several times. But this is the basic one. So let's try 16x to the four minus one. We have square, square, minus in the middle. Four x squared squares up to 16x to the four. One squares up to one, minus in the middle. We had drop things in the formula. So I have 4x squared plus one times 4x squared minus one. That's a factorization, but we should check and we note the second factor, difference of two squares applies again. So here the a will be a two x, the b will be a one. So I drop it in the formula. We carry along the four x squared plus one times two x plus one, two x minus one. That's as far as we could take this one. And then, you can think of examples where you can go to three or four. You can um, look those up. Finally, difference of two squares. Well, in grouping, this is a thing that can happen. So let's try x cubed plus two x squared minus x minus two. How does grouping work? We have four terms. So what we'll do is we'll pair off into two pairs. We'll pull the greatest common factor out of each pair, and then if what's left over matches, we can again pull that out to get a two on two. Let's take a look. So here, the first pair, the only thing I could pull out is an x squared. That'll leave an x plus two. And then in the second pair, okay, note I always pull out the negative if it's in the third term. So when I pull that out, I'm gonna be left with an x plus two also. Okay, if this was gonna work, these had to match. So that's a clue for what shows up here. If you're having issues with the minus minus, note if we distribute the minus sign in to the parentheses as a check, we'll get the minus x minus two that we were working with here. So that can be a little bit of trial and error till you get it. Now, x plus two, x plus two, we factor that out and then what's left over, I have an x squared and then for the negative in the middle, that's really a minus one. And we note x plus two, x squared minus one, that can still factor further into x plus two times x plus one times x minus one. And then that's as far as I'll be able to take this one. For our next special case, we have perfect square trinomial. Now, this case, not nearly as important as difference of two squares or the cubic formula. It does come up with completing the square, depending on how you learn it. Here, okay, let's note a few things. First, trinomial, because it has three parts. Well, the rule itself, I don't know, like um, in one direction, it's just foil. In the other direction, if it's gonna factor, it'll work by the factoring methods we've already done. 
So it's a special case, not that special. On the other hand, it's extremely important to point out the common error. So what this is, I'll take a plus b squared. Now it's important to remind yourself of what squaring is. We're gonna take the thing, multiply it by itself. So this goes to a plus b times a plus b. We foil this, we get a squared plus two ab plus b squared. The mistake is gonna be, a okay, common mistake is to ignore what squaring does and just distribute the squared everything on the inside, which would give me an x squared plus two squared if we had x plus two squared as our original. Now let's note the proper way to do this. x plus two squared, that's x plus two times itself. We foil, we get x squared plus four x plus four. So that's going in one direction. And that's the proper way to do it. So that would be the check if we had factored. Now note, if I go the other direction, well, x squared plus four x plus four, we know how to do the x plus x plus, and then this would be a case where that works. So you really don't need a special formula to factor these things. They kind of fit in with the others. Final special form, we have cubic formula where we have either a sum or a difference of cubes. Now, we put both formulas together. So that's gonna be a cubed plus minus b cubed. Then it'll be a plus minus b where the signs are the same as what you start out with, depend on which one you go with. And then for the second factor, we have a squared minus plus ab plus b squared. And you'll note this looks a lot like difference of two squares, just there's an extra term in the middle and maybe you gotta juggle the signs a little bit. So that's the general pattern. Let's write the pattern out just with the plus for clarity and for the examples on this board. So we have a cubed plus b cubed equals a plus b. And then as before, rather than go with the squares, I'm gonna just write a a minus a b plus b b. So you'll note each of these has two terms. In the middle, it's a minus, like with difference two squares. And then um, we have A's and B's in all possible pairs. Now let's look at an example. If I have X cubed plus eight, same as difference of two squares, I do my bookkeeping off on the side. What cubes up to X cubed, that's gonna be an X. What cubes up to eight, that's gonna be a two. We have a plus in the middle. So we'll use this extra one I've written out. And then that's just gonna be X plus two times x times x is x squared minus 2x and then plus 2 times 2 which is a 4 and then that's where this goes typically this second factor is not going to factor nicely so we would just stop there unless instructed otherwise another one let's try 27x cubed plus 64 what cubes up to 27 x cubed? Well, three cubes up to 27, x cubes up to x cubed. And then for 64, we have four cubing up to 64. So plus in the middle, we could drop everything into our pattern. So we get a three x plus four. I'm gonna square three x. So what's square three x? That's three x times three x, I get nine x squared. We have a minus 12x, and then it's gonna be b times b, or four times four, four is 16. So three x plus four, nine x squared minus 12x plus 16. Common errors on this one, the bookkeeping on the second factor can be disastrous if you're not careful with your squares. Let's try the difference formula. So we have a cubed minus b cubed, it's a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. First example, let's try x cubed, y cubed minus 27. We think about what cubes up. So what's gonna go to x cubed, y cubed? Well, x goes to x cubed, y goes to y cubed. So I'll let a be x, y. And then three is gonna cube up to 27. So that's our b. We have a minus in the middle. So I just drop our parts in the template to get xy minus three times x squared y squared plus three xy plus nine. 
if you want to be careful for the a squared, you could write that first as x, y, x, y, and then put it together to get the squares. That'll be more useful in our next example where this will be a common error. All right, next example, this one's got a few difficult parts, so let's take a look. We have 16y minus 54x to the 9y to the 7. I don't see any perfect cubes here, but not a problem. Before we do any proper factoring, we're supposed to bring out the greatest common factor. So if we look, we have 1654 gives a 2. Y, Y the 6, we can pull out a Y, leaving a Y the 6. There's no X in the 16Y, so that won't show up in the greatest common factor. And that means our greatest common factor is a 2Y. We pull that out. What we're left with is 8 minus 27X to the 9Y the 6. And there are perfect cubes. Now, what do we do with that? Well, I got to ask what cubes up to 8 and 27x to the 9y to the 6. Well, 2 is going to cube up to 8 nicely. 3 goes to 27. What about x to the 9? Well, what I'm looking for, okay, remember, what do we do with a cube? I'm going to take x to a power, x to a power, x to a power to get to x to the 9. That power's got to be x cubed because x cubed, x cubed, x cubed. We add the 3s, we get a 9. For the y to the 6, same idea. I'm going to use y squared, so y squared, y squared, y squared gives me the y to the 6. And now we have all our parts. a is 2, b is 3, x cubed, y squared. We drop it in the template. We're still not out of the woods. We have to be careful here also. And so here's going to be where a common error comes in. We'll drop our 2y. The next factor straightforward, we just drop the a and b in. So 2 minus 3, x cubed, y squared. And then for the last factor, we need to be careful with the big term. So the a squared ab, straightforward, we'll get 4 plus 6x cubed y squared. For the third part, what do we do? I'm going to take b times b. So I'm going to do this off on the side so we don't shortcut and make an error. That's 3x cubed y squared times 3x cubed y squared. The threes go to a nine, x cubed, x cubed goes to x to the six, the y squared, y squared goes to y the four. That's the right way to do that. You'll see all different kinds of mishaps um, if you just go directly to the square where you could use the proper power over a multiple base rule, but students typically forget it when they haven't seen exponents in a while. So that's what we're looking for here. Now, we finish with, where does this formula come from? I don't have a good intuitive explanation for how you get this if you forget it when you're in a testing situation. Mostly what we do is just show that it's true. So what we would do is, is take the two on three factor, multiply it out, and make sure we get our cubes with whatever in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the A cubed plus B cubed formula first. So what am I going to do? We're going to multiply a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And that's going to be like multiplying two long integers or two polynomials. So what do we do? First, I multiply everything by a b. Then I'll multiply everything by an a. We line the columns up correctly so that things match. And then you note when you add things together, the a cubed and the b cubed make it to the end. But everything in the middle drops out, giving us this nice simple formula, or at least this is simple, the formula we got to think about a little bit, but at least it works. Now, if you want the other one, the a cubed minus b cubed, you could do this all over again. Or if you want to be clever, just take your b and replace it with a minus b and see what the changes are. So for instance, if I have a cubed plus a minus b cubed, well, when I cube the minus one, that's just going to go to a minus one, so you get a cubed minus b cubed. When you put it into the formula we just checked, the only thing that's going to change is the middle term, which is going to go to a plus AB. And then that checks out.